Oh, this is an interesting evening. I almost made it home. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the channel. I'm Ben, aka Claude Van Damage. And those of you that have followed me and subscribed, thank you, I appreciate it. And if you haven't already, go ahead and give this a like, hit the subscribe button. It's totally free, it doesn't cost anything. So in today's video, we're gonna do more on my $300 budget car that I recently picked up that had about 4,382 and a half problems. No lie. So the $300 budget car is basically a 98 Chevrolet Prism. But if you know anything about cars from the late 90s to early 2000s, a lot of the domestic cars were built by Toyota, Mazda, Honda. So this is also a Toyota Corolla. If you don't believe me, I'll show you something real quick. In a previous video that I did, this door did not have a door panel on it. I recently found the door panel and you'll never guess what I pulled it off of. It came off of a white 1999 Toyota Corolla. But it is a Chevy. Toyota built these cars for Chevy and they just branded them as Chevrolets. But everything on this car from the motor, interchangeable, it's, it's, it's all a Toyota Corolla. Look up a 97 to 02 Toyota Corolla. It's basically a Chevrolet Prism. I should say a Chevrolet Prism is a Toyota Corolla. And for that I'm thankful because my wife also has, has a Toyota and it's an 07. And that thing hasn't stopped running yet. It just keeps going and going and going. And when I bought my $300 budget car, I was actually able to get in it and drive it home. But the reason for this video is, is if you look over there, yeah, that door panel's kind of a problem. Actually, actually, that door panel's only half of it's there. I'm gonna go back to the same place I found this door panel, and I'm gonna get the other door panel. So I think today's gonna be fun and a little educational. So we're gonna go on a little ride. Don't mind that. That's a project for a later date. We worry about the things that we touch on a more regular basis. And speaking of $300 budget cars, or just budget cars in general, they usually always have lots of character. And by that I mean, my seat belt thing here doesn't work. The seat belt doesn't lock into it. So I actually go across to the other side so that way I can lock it in or I couldn't wear a seat belt. Yes, that's something I'm looking for also. But let's go to the salvage yard and pull some parts. All right, so more on the $300 budget car. I mean, it really was cheap and I was a bit weary when I test drove it. And when I test drove it, it did not run that good. And it actually didn't have a title either. But it did have all of the paperwork to obtain a title and which we can talk about here for a moment while I'm on my way to the salvage yard. Now this is a salvage slash tow company that had several other businesses and one of the main businesses closed down but the salvage yard is still here. And I guess this had a storage, I don't know if it was a storage lien or mechanics lien on it. So they went through all the, the processes, the paperwork, you have to send out notices and whatnot. It's a whole lot of paperwork to do but luckily they had all of that paperwork which enabled me to get this car registered and into my name. Now there are other ways around cars that don't have titles but if you buy it from someone that has that has all that paperwork, save it. It will help you out. And depending on what state you live in, I live in the state of Texas, and whenever you're doing things like that, it's very important, very important to have a bill of sale. Normally, if you have a title, a bill of sale doesn't really mean a hill of beans. But if you're buying a vehicle without a title, a bill of sale is quite important. It proves what you bought, how much you bought it for, on the date you bought it, and who you bought it from. That's all very important whenever all that information gets sent into your state's capital and they decide or don't decide to issue you a title. It definitely helps. I haven't had any issues yet and I've already done several cars like this so I'm somewhat familiar with the process. Alright, so we have to make a quick stop. I didn't grab any water. I'm going to be out there for a little bit and I don't have anything to drink so afterwards I'm going to be really thirsty. So I'm almost there. The place is probably 15-20 minutes from my house. 
So I've got probably another 10 minutes to go, but I'm gonna stop and grab me some water to drink so that way after I'm done, I've got something to drink because I'm gonna be thirsty. Good timing, I needed that. Get hydrated. Let's go! All right, so I'm into the yard. Got my tool pouch. Probably looks like I'm ready to go into battle. This thing's pretty handy. I got everything I need in here. Just a few basic tools, screwdrivers, pry tool, wrench, ratchet, pliers. Always a good idea to carry some basic tools. So right now I'm gonna walk back here to the car. I'm waiting on him. He's gotta bring a, a loader back here to move the car over for me. Because it's too close on the passenger side, I can't open the door just yet. So but I'm gonna walk back here and at least get started on it. And then he's gonna come back uh, over here and move it for me. But I'm gonna walk over here to the car. I'm just coming to salvage yards and seeing all the cool things they have here. The cool Jaguar over there, the Mustangs. But needs any Ranger parts. There's some Ford Rangers, big semi trucks. Got a little bit of everything here. A little bit of everything. I remember my car is a Chevrolet Prism. And there it is right there, the Toyota Corolla that I took the door panel off of. This is a 1999 Toyota Corolla. Finally got it open. It didn't open that hard last time. And there's the door panel that I robbed. And there's the other one that we're stealing over there. It's in pretty good shape, the door panels are. I might consider taking the rear view mirror. My rear view mirror is a little, a little rough. But I'm also gonna try and check, take the shifter bezel there because mine's all damaged. I don't know if I'll be able to get to the door panel today. We're having trouble getting the loader started. The battery's dead, they're trying to jump it off, but I need to get in here to this door panel. But yeah, I can't get that door open, there's no way. And I've squeezed door panels out before without opening the door and you break stuff. And with a car this old that's been sitting in the Texas sun for a good while, it's possible to break things. So I wanna be extremely careful with it as possible. They're supposed to come and slide this over if they can get the loader started. So hooray, they got it going. I just heard him start it up. He's coming back here right now. I have him slide this over. This ought to be fun. Cool stuff alert. I just need to stay out of the way. This is going to pick it up and slide it over for me. Woo hoo! Look at there. Scratch the paint. There we go. we are back in business so if you never remove one of these these just kind of pop off here they just got some clips in here that hold them in there you just pull it up off there like that it's got a screw here and a screw here and uh, this here will pop up off there we'll take that off there we'll take the screw out of here we'll just find a decent spot so I can get in here to get this let's get all the screws out of it first and then we'll go from there save all of these because I'm probably going to need them for my car and then slides out from the back so you pry it up and pull it out and then you unhook it tell you what this tool pouch is freaking awesome and that way our door panel comes off without this being attached We'll have some clips around the door that we'll have to pop out. And there's a, well it's gone, so I don't have to worry about that. We'll just come in here and pop them loose. It's 
see the manual mirrors have a hole in them. Mine were solid. So now we can pull it up and off. Okay, there's our inside door handle. And voila, we have a door panel. So we now have two matching door panels, which was better than our existing none before. I don't know what was living in there, but there obviously was something living in there at some point. But I think we have everything that we need for today. But this thing here is exceptionally cool. An old Ram Power Wagon Wrecker just sitting here. Uh, this is an interesting evening. I almost made it home. I gotta deal with this. So luckily that cop just gave me a warning and he actually pulled me over due to my, my windshield. Cause since I've had it, it's got some cracks in it and the cracks have gotten a little bit bigger. So a little time's gone by. But I got the new Toyota Corolla door panel on the prism. So if you guys stuck around this long, thanks for watching. Hit that subscribe button. It helps me out and I'll see you in the next one.